Green Hell sold over 1.5 million copies on PC, so it was no surprise to see the developer's Creepy Jar port the intense tribal jungle-based survival game over to console, and now Green Hell has sold over 4.5 million copies. With numerous updates, bug fixes, and new DLC to enjoy, I felt it was time to revisit Green Hell and see if it's still up there as one of the most hardcore survival games on the market. Green Hell is set in the treacherous Amazon jungle that's typically accessible after a 9 hour flight, a 4 hour boat ride, an 80 mile trek, followed by a 200 foot climb up a cliff face. Well, that's not accessible, is it? You'll play as Jake Higgins, who's on an expedition with his wife Mia in the Amazon rainforest, and after the long, hard and gruelling trek, Jake was no doubt very much looking forward to a nice warm bed and a quick bite to eat once he eventually arrived at the so-called campsite. Campsite. This isn't that campsite. I've been to campsites. They have toilets, showers, maybe a little arcade. There's so much rewarding and equally punishing depth to the mechanics, and it makes for such a brutal, no-nonsense survival game that'll have you scanning every direction of your proximity to avoid the long list of dangers that could wipe out your health bar in no time. One of the biggest standout features of Green Hell is your sanity, and keeping yourself sane is a major survival factor that you'll want to keep a very close eye on. The inconveniences of the jungle, like four or five leeches sucking you dry or being forced to digest a handful of maggots, will see your sanity levels plummet. Taking your wife to the jungle doesn't exactly get your sanity levels off to the greatest of starts either, as at the start of the game, Mia wanders off for a quick chat with the local tribe without saying anything at all, but not before she breaks the news that she's forgotten the bloody lighter, as well as some other vitally important equipment needed to survive the Amazon rainforest. Honestly, what is she like, eh? What is she like? An idiot. An idiot is what she's like. Yeah, we have no fire. <sighs> Not a single lighter, nor a box of matches. You need to do it the old-fashioned way. One of these days. One of these days. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right to the moon. <laughs> This is only the tutorial, of course, because eventually you'll be tasked with surviving the elements and threats within the jungle by yourself, and it's here where the trials of the story truly begin. The hardcore elements that I mentioned aren't simply just keeping your food and fluid levels topped up. Food is broken down into the key components of carbs, proteins, and fats from the incredibly wide variety of delicacies on offer in the forest, so you can still make some gains in the jungle. Having said that, lacking any one of these nutrient categories can result in premature death gains as you experience severe drops in health and energy, which makes the already treacherous exploration an even harder task. Virtually everything is edible in the game, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should eat it. Going in blind is part of the fun, and finding out what you should and shouldn't eat can be a gruesome case of trial and error. Brightly coloured frog? Pop it in your gob! Glowing fluorescent mushrooms? Ooh, don't mind if I do. Intimidatingly spiky fruit? Ooh, yes please. The list goes on and on, and you'll be constantly stumbling across new delicacies to sample. Go on, add that. What, what, what are you mixing there? Toad and a bit of spit? Oh, I want to try that. Pretty much all of the items in the game can be used to benefit you in one way or another, and the methodical approach of inspecting your arms and legs for bites, scratches, rashes, leeches, and potential worms that have embedded themselves under your flesh can quickly deplete your health, energy, and sanity. I loved this aspect of truly hands-on self-preservation, and it's probably my favourite mechanic in Green Hell that really evoked that sense of survival. You'll learn the various methods of medicine to heal certain wound types, and even the basics of keeping yourself washed and clean can help your body and mind stay at peak condition. Unfortunately, dressing up as one of the locals and having a little dance with them does not work. You cannot, I repeat, cannot dance with the local tribes in the game. They will mess you right up. I tried.
Something that more and more survival game developers are doing an increasingly better job of is integrating a story into their games, rather than simply plonking me into a sandbox and seeing how long I can survive. Green Hell 2 has a somewhat decent story mode as well as the story based DLC, Spirits of the Amazonia, on top of the standard sandbox survival mode and the challenge mode too. Each mode has their own customizable settings in case you want to tweak the gameplay as well. Now exploring the hellish green jungle, you can't go five feet without seeing something that can be used, something that can be eaten, or something that can kill you. I'm still yet to play another survival game where there are so many items of interest within such a close proximity of each other, and ones that all either have value or danger associated with them. It grounds me in the world with this gorgeous look greenery and not knowing what joyous food source or life-ending dangers are waiting for me on the other side of that quivering bush. Four-player co-op was initially restricted to the survival mode, but the story modes are now playable in co-op as well, so you and your mates can argue about who should be focusing on the food gathering and who should be focusing on building a safe base to call your home. Built this, which I think is pretty good going, considering it's been pissing it down. You swanned off over there, fucking filling your big fat face. I'm not sure why anyone would want to build a home beyond the absolute essentials in such a hostile environment, and I think Creepy Jar ran with that idea. Most of the base building is just your essentials, and every base building item you can build has some sort of pragmatic use that's applicable to being stranded in the bloody jungle. Everything in the base building mechanic makes sense. There are different levels of quality and protection to each of the materials you'll used to build, as well as some blueprints to improve the convenience of being stranded in the jungle. The new building update that released earlier this year saw the introduction of some new structural items, some new treehouse building options, and the ability to build a floating base on water too, which is really cool. Like I mentioned already, there's danger lurking around every corner in this game. You've got wasp nests, ant hills, scorpions, snakes, poisonous frogs, piranhas, jaguars, and piss off tribesmen, just to name a few, so using your ears is pivotal for survival, and I don't mean by flapping your lobes around like Dumbo just to fly yourself out of the bloody jungle. Each predator and potential danger will give you an audible clue as to their whereabouts, so aimlessly sprinting around the jungle is not advisable. Combat isn't anything special, unfortunately, and is something that's frequently neglected in most survival games. That's still factoring in the 2019 combat overhaul update that introduced a new tribal spearman enemy, a new armor crafting system similar to the forests, and the new human traps to make use of. Combat isn't the primary focus of Green Hell as you'd expect, but mechanically it still feels very floaty which is worsened tenfold if you're suffering from pretty much any affliction, but I really like the occasional glimpse you'll get of some decent enemy AI where you have to slowly back away from a predator while still looking at them square in the eye before planting a well-placed spear or arrow right through its dome. It's equally terrifying as it is satisfying. Headshots are the key to winning most duels but dressing up as a member of the local tribe in the hope that you'll become a master of the bow and arrow will do absolutely nothing to improve your skills. I can't do it. Can't do it. However, just by simply actioning those skills, you'll organically improve on that skill, like spearfishing, normal fishing, axe wielding, bow and arrows, as well as crafting items. And speaking of crafting, the inventory and crafting system is similar to that of The Forest, which is another firm survival game favourite of mine, with the interior of the backpack being visible and tips on how to make specific tools or medicines can be found within your notebook. Green Hell is a fantastic hardcore survival game that was very much worthy of a port to console. Performance wise I'm still suffering with the odd frame drop, which was the case when I first played on release which was on a 2080 with an i9, now I'm on a 3090 playing at 4k, I'm still suffering from the same types of frame drops, most notably when it's raining or stood near a fire. Green Hell is of course also playable on PS5 and Series X, though it targets 60fps, I've heard mixed reports on the console performance side of things 
though I haven't been able to test that myself. You should absolutely buy Green Hell. It's a brutal survival experience that while it isn't intended for the faint-hearted, the customizable gameplay settings makes it pretty welcoming to all players and couple that with the addition of the prequel story DLC Spirits of Amazonia that throws Jake into the crossfire between two tribes and introduces a new trust point system as well as the continuous efforts to update Green Hell and the dedication that the developers Creepy Jar have shown towards listening to the players and you can't go wrong buying Green Hell if you're a fan of the survival genre. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.